first thing we need to do is decide what boat to build. I've decided on a 1906-1911 standard 600 footer in 3.27 scale for two very good reasons. Number one, I don't have one in my collection, believe it or not. Number two, I have the plans, thanks to Chris. Next, we need the balsa wood. To start, we'll need to get three sheets of 3 seconds by 3 and a single sheet of 1 by 3. Some folks prefer block balsa. I have always used sheet balsa. Next, these. Time cards. You can usually get them at Staples or Office Depot or Office whatever or similar stores. Actually, just a few will do, but you have to buy the whole stack. A whole stack will last you a lifetime. If you can't find any of those, a couple of ordinary manila folders will do. These are for making deck houses and pilot houses. Now, pins. Gotta have pins. Lots of pins. Raiding someone's sewing room is not out of the question. Yellow wood glue, any brand will work. And wood filler, this is what I use. By the way, avoid white glue. It is highly water soluble. Cyanoacrylate glue, aka super glue, or as we say in model rockets, buy the generic. CA is CA, go cheap. Quick weld, cannot live without it. And for epoxy, always use the five minute stuff. You can get these in a lot of places, any hardware store. This is my most used tool after the boats are constructed. The double headed pocket screwdriver. Phillips on one end, flathead on the other. Frankly, I never bought one of these. They were all trade show giveaways. In electronics, we call these heat sinks. In model boat scratch building, I call them beyond handy. They are hard to find, however. You're going to need at least one good sized 45, and I also find it handy to have a smaller 45. This one I cut from a CD case. I made it myself. You'll also need an engineer's pencil, maybe three. I tend to lose them. For good measuring, I use an engineer's scale. One for fractions and one for decimals. I guess it helped to take drafting in high school. When you're too broke to buy X-Acto blades, like I often was, this little gadget is great for resharpening the old blades. I got this for a quarter at a Florida flea market. These small channel locks are great for one specific job. Opening stubborn paint bottles. Spare your hands, folks. These little plastic clamps can be used in a lot of ways. Honestly, I have more than I really use. But hey, they're cheap. Hemostats. At least that's what I group them as. Get as many as you can. And if your roommates are stoners, keep a close eye on the hemostats. These will walk away faster than the loose pocket change you left on your dresser. A good set of needle noses and wire cutters are essential. Especially if you're going to put electronics into your boat. The absolute most important tool is the X-Acto knife. I prefer any handle as long as it will take a number 11 blade, plus a good emery board, plus an X-Acto saw, and you can conquer the world, or at least model it in balsa wood. A Dremel tool is your best investment as a modeler. I also have the wired type for when the battery on the portable one goes dead at the worst possible time. The drill bit assortment is a good gift to hint for.
you know, like at Christmas time. For those of us over 50, a pair of these becomes essential. My distance vision is still 2015 like it was in college. But that up close vision, ugh. My kids used to call these Daddy's Dr. Duck glasses. The name stuck. Next time you're at Staples or office whatever, go into the back in the drafting aisle and pick up a couple of these. French curves. We'll use them in the first steps of our boat build. While in that same store, look for wire tag ties. They come in a bundle like this. And they have tons of uses in model boat building, from antennas to posts for fences. You can also find them at uline.com. One bundle will last you forever. Here's something else with a zillion uses where one box will last forever. They're called applicator sticks and are found at medical supply outlets. They usually come in boxes of a thousand and are good for everything from masts to glue spreading and epoxy mixing. Finally, if you're going to be installing electronics, you'll need a soldering iron and some rosin core solder too. If you don't know how to solder, learn. Also, one of these sets of grabbers is very handy. Plus, you'll need a VOM, volt ohm meter. This is mine from 1975. You're not going to be checking a lot of voltages but you will need it for continuity checks. There. Now you have your own shopping and scrounging list. Go heavy on the scrounging. Now go out and get it so you can make your own messy workbench. Good luck. We're all counting on you.